Hello everyone, it's Miss D and Halloween is just around the corner. And what better way to count down than with a few book recommendations and a spooky story for both teens and adults alike. So let's gather around today's virtual campfire while I present to you an old classic tale written by Eunice Reader titled number 23 Little Red Riding Hood. This tale is sure to give you thrills, chills, and frightful delight. I opened the front door of my house and walked out closing the door behind me. It was dark and spooky. I could hear crickets creaky. The wind blowing slow, slow, slowly. And I saw a little bit of smoke shining from the moonlight. I walked down a few steps of the porch and right there was a smaller dirt path into the woods. My gran lived in the woods. It kind of scared me at first when I was little. Walking through the woods to get to her house, but I grew out of it. I had to grow out of my fears. Gran had told me, fear, you know, it's just a part of your imagination. It's not real, but everyone has one. I took a deep breath and started walking towards the dirt path into the woods. I was feeling a bit of a chill, making me stuff my hands into the pockets of my sweater. I was on the dirt path until it faded into dry grass of the woods. I knew my way around these woods, which I was glad. All I heard were crunching of leaves under my shoes as I took my steps. I looked up at the sky seeing tree branches and bits of the dark sky. While there were a few stars shining around the moon, which was a beautiful sight, it was peaceful. And then, crack! I stopped dead in my tracks, listening for that sound again. I slowly looked around, nothing. Then I turned back to the right path and started to walk. But then I heard it again. Crack! It was like a stick snapping in two. I looked around once again. Hello! I called out standing on my toes and back down scanning the area. But then my eyes stopped staring at the bushes a few meters from me. I could see it perfectly. Two red deadly little eyes staring right at me. I stayed put for a moment until it jumped out of the bushes. I crashed and I started to run. I was running down the path towards Grand House until that thing was right behind me. It led me the other way. I gasped, turning my head. It was a, a wolf. Its teeth gnashed and drool was dripping down its chin. Oh my goodness, the snarls and growls that came from its jaws. This was not like any other wolves that I've seen. It had black fur all around and it was much bigger than a wolf. Its size looks like a lion's body and I 
was like, oh my, oh my, what am I to do? Fur from his head started to pull back because of how mad it was at me. My goodness, its glare looked like a look of pure hunger. I started to pant, running, until all of a sudden, I felt this claws dig right into my back, pushing me to the ground. I screamed, ah! It made me turn around to face it. I pushed away its neck with both of my hands. I was trying to get it to stop from gnawing at me. And then it bit my arm, making me scream, oh! And I pulled my arm down. The wolf barked, And then it bit me again, sinking its teeth further into my arm. Oh my goodness, it pounced on top of me. I was losing blood. Hey, get off of her, you foul beast! Someone yelled out of nowhere, making the wolf retract his teeth right out of my arm, and it backed off. That person kneeled down beside me, giving me a good look, look over. It was Gran. Gran, I stuttered, seeing her wearing a red cape and a red hood on her head. Eunice, sweetheart, she cried. I felt dizzy. I started to slowly fall to the ground. Draped in her red and black cape, my grandmother charged ferociously at the growling, grr, grr, wrestling beast, wrestling him to the ground. When I woke, it was my grandmother's cottage that I was at and I was wearing her long red cape. What was that? I asked curiously. Could it be? I exclaimed. A werewolf! As much as it sounds like a fairy tale, your guess is correct, soothed my grandmother. I have protected this town from wolves for many decades. And now it's time to pass the torch to you to continue the generation of the Red family. The Red family generation? What's that? I questioned. She then walked over to her bookshelf and grabbed a large locked journal and began reading to me our family story about a little girl who lived in a village near a forest who wore a powerful red riding cloak and fought off werewolves. At the end of the story was an oath that my grandmother and her grandmother took and many generations before them. And now it was my time to carry the torch. With my grandmother as a witness I proclaimed, I, Eunice, swear to watch and protect those who need me. Although they do not know me, they also will never know the horrors that I must face to protect them. From now on, you can just call me Little Red Riding Hood. The end. Well, I'd like to thank you for listening to today's scary campfire tale. If you're searching for something spooky, mysterious, or downright frightful to read this Halloween season, I invite you to try Contagion, written by Terry Terry. Or maybe you want to sink your teeth into Death Prefers Blondes by Rohing. Or Maybe you can try out Scary Out There by Mayberry. You can check out these books by stopping in to the East Cleveland Public Library 
or by downloading them from Overdrive with your Cleavenet library card.